、うん、粉々にした貝殻だ大昔に千空が教えてくれたのを覚えていてな科学の難しい理屈は俺にはわからんが念のため作って巻いておいたんだ That is really, really clever, and that's a great memory for him to just you know, keep all of that back there. Because I don't know when the last time it was that in Dr. Stone they used calcium carbonate, which is what seashells are made of, to actually you know, implement for anything. But this is certainly realistic. I mean, you can buy this as fertilizer for your garden today. Adding seashells to the soil will actually change the texture and it'll allow for the plants to absorb a lot more nutrients that they're going to need, which is vital for their growth, and it's going to grow faster and stronger. Human innovation is really, really fast. I mean, I don't know how long after we started growing these crops this way that somebody said, How can I do this but way faster? <laughs> right? I mean, it's probably five minutes after we made the first car, the idea of racing cars began. <laughs> こいつら混ぜた怪しい液にガラスを漬け込む隠し味に干しぶどうのぶどう糖を少々かけりゃ完成はいよってなんだおや That is super super cool Yeah that is the process that you would do to make a silver mirror And especially with the ingredients you listed that is absolutely correct Sodium hydroxide You need silver nitrate, sugar and ammonia and really what the main important thing here is that the order of chemical reactions matters when it comes to the outcome that you are desiring. So the sodium hydroxide and the silver nitrate are the first things that you mix together and then you put it in an aqueous solution which is a very very fancy chemistry nerd engineering STEM version of saying dunk it in water. <laughs> and after you dunk the sodium hydroxide and the silver nitrate in water you just continue to mix it until what you end up with is a certain like weird colored mixture and then you just continue like diluting it in water and then that's when you add your ammonia and it is important to make sure that while this is all going on the mixture is cold and then you slowly heat it up don't boil it and then from there you actually put in your little glass and that is when when you continue to mix it one side I mean if you cover the other side will actually turn into a perfect mirror the reason we add sugar at the end is because sugar is oxidized by the silver nitrate and reduces it to pure silver which will evenly coat the glass. Silver being a key part of this process because silver coatings are ideal for observing all wavelengths of light. The metal has high reflectivity and low emissivity meaning it absorbs very little light, gives off barely a sheen of its own, and those combination of traits leads to an excellent perfect silver mirror. Since the mid 1900s we've been using metal mercury to make mirrors because for one it's cheaper and it does tend to last a little bit longer. さあ、撮るわよ。こういうカメラってあれだよね。左右がひっくり返るやつ。いや、プリズム入ってっからな。反転もしねえ。That, that is really, that is super, super cool how they're able to make a camera. And th that used to be a real camera that is used all the time. But that's not the, for, I, I have such a hard time pronouncing that word, so I'm not even going to try and butcher it for you guys. But that camera is not the first camera ever made. It's the first camera that had practical widespread use and was used a lot in the United States especially. How they work is by taking the silver plated sheet Senku just made and treating it with fumes to make the surface even more light sensitive and then you would place that behind the lens of the camera in front of the image that you're trying to capture because the lens will also focus the light even further. Once you have all that set up the photographer will tell you what to do and that is wait. You wait and you just wait and you just sit there for as long as the photographer tells you to do because if it's a lot of light exposure where you are then you only have to sit there for a couple of seconds but the darker the area is the longer you're going to have to wait for the camera to actually capture the image and put it on the metal plate. The darkest areas of this image are bare silver from the mirror that was just made and they're very very fragile. Most if not all of them have scruffs around the edges exposing it to silver sheen and one particular image that is really popular is this one of Abraham Lincoln and each photo that you took using this camera would all be black and white color didn't happen for many many years later hey. 
世界一有名な科学者のポーズだから、ユデン様もあの日、俺がペットボトルキャップから作ったのと同じ。炭素数5から12、超高品質のガソリンだ。つまり、センク。That is a giant push forward for the stone world, finding oil. Because that's, that's huge. Depending on how you process the oil, and by that I mean. How the, the temperature which you heat it up to be, it can be used as fuel for、uh, cars, airplanes, lawnmowers, right? Just about anything that has an engine that'll allow for petroleum. The main difference between diesel fuel and gasoline is that diesel fuel is much thicker, and it needs to be because diesel engines are built to withstand a much higher compression. That makes them more reliable, that makes them last longer, and it also makes them a lot more expensive. The top straw of that container is open to the air around it so that it doesn't create air bubbles. And so, for, for example, if you've ever taken a bottle or a two liter of like soda or pop, whatever part of the country you're from, depending on what you call it, and you just flip it upside down, and whatever liquid is getting out of the bottle, you'll sometimes see air bubbles go back up. And you're gonna hear that sound too, right? And the reason that happens is because the volume of that container is changing, so the pressure has to equalize with it, and that's why the air goes up. However, the reason that this is not going to happen with what Senku is doing is because that straw is actually doing the equalizing in real time. Ketai ya Kanabi ni tsuiteru. Jinko Ace kara no denpa de ichi sokte suru kiki da. Kanabi? Ace? Muri de sho Ace wa! Tari ni da ro! Da kara Jinko Ace no kawari ni kyo ryok denpa tare nagas chijo no todai yo tsuka. GPS stands for Global Positioning System, and it, it'll actually work even in outer space, so it, it could be beyond global. A GPS requires three components a ground station, a satellite, and a receiver. Now, since Senku is not going to launch a satellite into Earth's orbit, he is going to be using that radio tower as a dual purpose for his ground station and the satellite. His receiver is the antenna aboard that boat, which is going to receive all sorts of signals from the cell tower. For most of us, the receivers that we operate on are the antenna inside of our cell phones or our cars. And those GPS systems are far better because we can actually triangulate our position. And we have so many reference points all around us. Senku has one reference point that's the one cell tower that he's operating from. So his GPS will specifically tell him the distance he is from that cell tower. Our lives run on GPS now. It's how Amazon drivers know where to drop off your package. It's how planes can navigate their flight path. It's also how all dating apps work. You can set the radius in terms of distance of who you want to potentially match with, and that could determine who you end up in a relationship with. So, GPS is actually very significant to everyone's lives every day. 100% 正確なテンポでな2枚の板のサンドイッチにぶちかますと間をくぐる電子ビームがきれいに曲がってお天下左右に Senku is using crystals which is incredibly incredibly smart and is really really clever I, I will say it, it would be better if he had concentrated magnets to act as a deflecting coil but Stone World. The crystals will work. It, it needs to be the same material on both sides for even distribution, and it's also not going to come out that perfectly clear. For higher quality, Senku will need magnets out of a coil to create a stronger magnetic strip. And if he wanted to add a vertical element and display a grid on that、uh, at the bottom of the flask, Then he will need to add the same crystals but perpendicular to the ones he already added, or just add a whole separate like, opening so one only does horizontal, one only does vertical, but there's lots of different ways to go about this. Cathode ray tubes were the norm for almost all TV sets for many, many years, and if you actually wanted to test it out, just take a, any, any magnet will do and just hold it right next to the television, and you will see the image start to distort and get out of shape, and that's because the cathode ray tubes are gonna be interrupted by the magnet you're like, touching the screen to. And also, almost all those are gonna have like, curved screens for other television sets, but at the, the, eventually what happened was those curved screens got. Out of use, and then people found better LED technologies and LCDs and all this fancy stuff until eventually we came up with flat screens. 
And that's why they're called flat screen TVs, is because initially they were all curved because that's what we use for cathode ray sets. This is the most bare bones motor I've ever seen. And it really will work the way that Senku has shown here. The magnetic poles are always opposite and opposing each other, which is why the smaller secondary magnet is spinning. And it's important to have one of them in a fixed position because if it wasn't, then both electromagnets would actually spin until they're sticking to each other. Now you just have one really strong magnet. You don't actually have one rotating in the magnetic field of the other. This last part is so true. It's what we were talking about earlier with the multiple coils yields a stronger magnetic field. For a drone to lift off, the motors will need to move the propellers really, really fast in order to achieve lift. And the shape of the propellers matters a lot too. Depending on the size of the drone and the actual shape of these propellers, you might not need four individual ones because you can just have one giant propeller over one tiny drone. But in this case, what I think they're trying to do is build the four of these and what advantage you're really getting out of something like this is because you want these propellers to be close enough so when they're spinning, like the distance, see if I actually get that on camera, the distance between them is not that large. So it's like when these two, no matter how fast they're spinning, these two propellers will never touch each other. And likewise, these two up here will never actually get in contact. But you don't want these to be so far from the main center load because the farther it is from the actual load, then the more difficult it will be to actually lift it. So you have to be close enough to this center of mass so that this thing can achieve lift, but you don't want it to be so close that the propellers will actually hit each other when they start spinning. And these took a while to perfect, but now drones are available all the time. And if you have a really cool girlfriend, she'll buy you one for your birthday. And I've been playing with this thing a lot ever since I got it. It's so much fun.